to 11. 13 now required to scoop it all. Yeah, I think if you look before the tournament, there were many storylines about this World Pool Championships, but probably no two bigger storylines than the two that have made the finals. Well, I agree, Jeremy. I mean, you've got Albin that's retaining the title, trying to, and then you've got Shane that no, we still all can't believe that he's not already won it. So, I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better, really. Yeah, and tactically, we see an immediate change to start the final for Shane. We haven't seen him from that side of the table breaking, I think, the entire tournament. And why do you think he's changed it at this stage, do you think, Jeremy? Well, we talked about it in the semifinal that uh, I think he needed to consider it. He and I talked about it at lunch. We went to lunch in between the finals. I think it was, I didn't see his interview, but I heard that he mentioned that. So it was already on his mind. He's a guy that definitely pays attention. Um, I didn't blame him not changing at the end of the last match because, you know, you change sides. He obviously likes the right side better. Why change at the end and maybe get a miss hit, right? right. So, but he's went off to the practice room and uh, prepared to be able to break from whichever side he feels is, is correct come this final. As you said, you went for a, a meal with him in between sessions, Jeremy. What sort of frame of mind would you say he was in overall about this big, big night for him? Well, I don't think it's a whole lot different than what I've seen the last few months. Uh, I know he hasn't had the victories, but I think he's been in a good place with his pool game. I think he's a very happy man. Uh, you know, stays that way anyways, but even more so. And I talked about it in the last match that I really feel he feels more nerves now. That's something he's getting used to, but I don't think he minds it that much. It's just something different, right? You know, for people that are not so familiar with uh, at this level of pool, the nerves, that can be a good thing. And it Absolutely, also, yeah. And it, it also can be a detriment to some yeah. players. So it's just about finding that balance and how it suits every different player. Yeah, all these players, and that's a great start for SBB, but all these players have had to deal with nerves, right? You get used to it. But Well, and morning to break. I know that Leading question, one. Uh, 20 years. 20 uh, years. Earl Strickland defeated Bustamani in Cardiff. Just not right down the road, but not too, too far away. I think 17-15 was the final score. I remember that one because I think I made the quarterfinal that year and lost to Earl. I, I can't remember. <laughs> I, I played great, and then I played the worst match of my life against Earl, but... Uh, but was happy to see him, an American and, and him go on and win. You say you played the worst match of your life. You only lost 11-8. Yeah, but it was still, I think it was really like 9-2 to two at one time or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but I think Earl gifted me a few coming down the end. Big shot here, though. And a long, long way off target. I think he was playing that with uh, inside English to run it off the rails to get over for the three. You know, it's um, very slight of the cloth. And yeah, he's playing that to run it across off the bottom rail. Um, and he's just kind of come across it, I think. Extension, please. Yeah, and what Kelly's getting at is 
is with the slick felt, if you're off just a hair with the pace, right? And when you're putting that side spin, the ball deflect a little bit more yep. and get on the thin side of that cut. Now, Alvin is one of the best at this shot, letting out the stroke with some top, straight top English. Now, I got away from him there. The slick felt, you can't always predict the bend, but you got to like the way he hit it, though, right? Oh, he hit it lovely and smooth, that's for sure. Um, you know, again, you've seen it there bounce off that top rail and straighten up. Um, it's purely just with the, the felt being so slick. Okay, this is about to say, I know he wants to stay offensive. Alban Ocean, 31 years of age. First won this championship in 2016, beating Shane Van Boning in the final. And then won it for the second time here in Milton Keynes last year. Putting in a really strong finish to see off the surprise finalist from Kuwait, Omar Al Shaheen. Yeah, and mistakes are going to be at a premium, you figure, so. Just you can probably count them on one hand between both players. We'll just have to see what kind of reward or, or let's say how penal they can be, right? Right, they're very clinical, both mm -hmm. of them. Shane Van Boning had the chance for 2 0, missed the two. Albinos and Alban Ocean takes full advantage. 1 1 in the early stages of this World Championship final. Alban Ocean has already won Alban well Alban over Alban. half a million dollars from the game. Shane Van Boning has passed two million. Bria will want this title more than anything. Money won't even factor into it. Well, the one's going to get a little tough. Not super tough, but a little tough. Four balls down on the break. Man, I think I don't think you're going to see either player switch from that side rail there. I think Shane, even though he missed that two ball, he likes what he sees from the break. So they're breaking very well. Now this shot here, I would love. I think the left pocket is where I'm going. I just like killing this two rails. If I get to the head string, that's fine by me. But the, going to the upper left corner really offers, you're going to guarantee that angle on the two ball to get back on the five. That's why I like that left pocket. And so does he. Yeah. And he even played it with a bit of inside English, getting closer to the two ball. So Alvin very comfortable here early. As we've mentioned, it's his fourth time in the world final. Nobody's ever done that before since this championship began in 1990. His first time was back in 2014. Extension, please. And he gave Niels Fyan a close contest before going down 13-10. And those two wins we talked about earlier. It looks like he's going to let the stroke out, or he's right in between. Do, do I want to stun this over? Or do I, I think it's just the stun. No reason to come to the top row. This 
will go ahead michael i'm sorry just going to say it'll fill him full of confidence the fact that there was a bit of work to do even though he got the four balls down on the break it wasn't a simple run out from there and i like the way he played this he made sure that he kept the angle to move the cue ball easily and let instead of some people try to draw back and get perfect and then you can fall that funny zone right yeah don't be afraid to work the cue ball a little bit You can see straight away that he's very comfortable. Yeah, well, well, both have had a break and run now. So that miss on the two from Shane Van Boning in the second rack is going to be the only difference between them after three. Oh, Alban Ocean. Two Alban Ocean searching for a record equaling third. Thank you, fourth break. Alban Ocean is leading to one and the break. Oh, he's going to get cut off here and. I'll tell you what, both these guys get such a tremendous amount of travel on that one ball at times, it seems like. The one ball just flies off the rack. Got a little kiss there, which is not too uncommon, believe it or not. Pretty difficult rollout here, huh, Kelly, with the three and the six the way they are. Very difficult to roll out and not anticipate getting buried on a safety. That's right. That's a big Push out call. a big area to, to get behind. Um, the only thing he can do is leave as much distance as he can and hopefully a little bit of an awkward angle so it's not natural to, to roll behind there. I think I might shoot off the eight and roll to the middle of the end rail. That way Same. I'm not it's leaving this real natural mm -hmm. angle to come off the left side of the one. Of course, you never know with Shane or Alvin what they're liable to cut in on you, right? True. <laughs> yeah. But I think, yeah, I think leaving this natural angle, I don't think Alvin was ever getting this back. And just as we said. Yeah, nice shot. I don't think Alvin had much choice apart from what you suggested, possibly. Um, but yeah, Shane was never going to give that one back to him. Yeah, and I, you know, old school guys, the guys I talked to about Nick Varners and stuff, Extension would label 12. that as a little bit of a mistake, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Because, you know, you always want to roll out to where you have a little chance of getting it back, at least some kind of chance of getting it back. So that tells you. I don't think there was ever a question mark there, but a little slight swerve here with the kick. Oh, he's jumping and kicking. Yeah. He's got a good chance to fluke this in. Wow, what a hit. <laughs> what a great shot. These balls don't have to be totally frozen to be able to throw the ball a little bit. And what I mean is change the direction of the six ball by what part of the one ball you hit. I think they're close enough. You can throw this ball in. He's looking at cutting it, but I think that's more difficult. Yes, I was going to say that. Please. We're definitely playing it for people that don't know. It squirts, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a very hard Slides to explain. Kinda, yeah. yeah. There's friction, basically. And it takes it the opposite to what you think. 
Yeah, I think he's got a better chance of missing this, cutting it from this side myself. Yeah. Now a bit of a roll, maybe. No, he's going to give up a combination. And the thing about that, maybe he could have made it if he cut it thinner and harder, right? You have to shoot it harder so it doesn't throw as much. And quite a bit thinner also, yeah. I think, yeah. He must not have felt that he could have thrown it, thrown it the other way. Well, a lot of players don't, don't realize. They think it has to be pretty much stuck to each other uh, to get the throw effect, but that's not really the case. The rule of thumb, I was told, is less than a chalk. Yeah, yeah. So. And it depends on what angle you're coming yes. in at. The speed, of course, the, the softer you shoot it, the more you can throw the ball. Even by getting this far, Alban Ocean has done something pretty rare. We're talking about him trying to retain the title, which hasn't been done for 31 years. But since Earl Strickland did that, only two other defending champions have even made it to the final. Johnny Archer in 1998 and Carlo Beato in 2018. And they both lost. Well, there's a lots of storylines, and there's more to come when it comes to Alvin Ocean. You know, whether he wins here or not, I wouldn't doubt he wins the World Pool Championships another year in the future. He's 32 years old now, but if he continues to success, it's going to be a little bit of a role reversal. People asking when you're going to win that U.S. Open. <laughs> <laughs> so. And he never gives any impression of being the sort of player who's ever going to settle for the success he's achieved. He's always going to want to be relentless, build on it, keep adding more to his legacy. Uh, he's gotten a little flat here, so he's got to work the ball a little bit. And I was thinking the same thing about, I was watching on the break, a few of the, the Masters golfers warming up, right? And I'm looking at it like a Sergio uh, a few others, and I'm wondering, you know, what drives them? And it's just the game they play. They love it, the passion, right? And those guys, of course, gazillionaires or whatever they are, but, you know, could easily wander off in the sunset and no one would blame them. But just like what you said about Alvin, the drive of the game, right? We play such a beautiful game. On the moment he won the Premier League here in Milton Keynes, Seven weeks ago now, he was already talking about coming back here for this bigger challenge. It seems the more success he's had over the last couple of years, the more his hunger has only grown. Yeah, he likes it, basically. Oh, no Bit of daylight for the oh, first cool. time. Ocean goes too clear. He leads Shane Van Boning, three racks to one. will stay in force throughout the year and they're all accumulating Leading points towards the points based four. list which will take effect from yeah. the end of 2022 and win or lose tonight he's going to add a huge amount to his total in that regard 3-1 he leads oh i think he got a friendly kiss there maybe an ugly one here at the end but i think initially that cue ball was heading towards the side pocket Maybe a shade below the side pocket, but it was going to be close. Push another, call. another difficult rollout situation. He's got a little easier than the last one, right, Kelly? I mean, well, 
Yes, I mean, the last one, it was an obvious, um, obvious problem that he had here. I mean, still, you know, where am I looking to go here? I'm just thinking, because it is a relatively easy separation shot, you know, and they've got the, f anywhere toward that um, purple five. Your choice, Jane. Oh, that's a nice shot. Yeah. I don't know what Shane will play here. I don't think he'll give it back. I think he's got to find something that he somewhat likes. Play again, please. Wow, he gave it back quickly. Right. He had a lot more time to look at that and did not really. I mean, there's a few different shots here you could play, I guess. But the one you said looks pretty obvious to me. The one towards the purple five. And the cue ball behind the pink four on the opposite side. That's what he's playing. Well, good decision for Shane so far. Do you take on the bank if it goes cross corner? I don't know if the three's in the way or not. Otherwise, you would chip the one and run behind the pink. Yeah, I think that's what he's looking to do. Get the cue ball back over the other side on the bolt line. I was going for behind the three. A little light, I think. See, I always think that's a bit dangerous because even if he's kicking at it, Albin can hold that cue ball now behind mm -hmm. the purple five. Whereas if he did play it with a bit more speed and spin, he could have got it behind the, the four. Yeah, and I thought that it was okay mainly also because the one was always going to be held up by the Extension purple five, cold. right? Correct, yes. So you could let the stroke out a little bit coming behind the four. And normally your speed's better when you don't have to hit it so delicate. So this is top English. Trying to kick and stick, maybe. I think so, yeah. Uh, he's going to be a little disappointed. He may get away with keeping him off the offensive shot, but definitely let him see it. I think that goes, Jeremy. Uh, that's close. If it goes, he's shooting. Shane Van Boning, 38 years of age now. I think he can twist it in if he elects to. Now, he'd like to be able to shoot it with just a high ball and go right at the purple five with the cue Touch. ball. Extension, please. I think that's probably the easiest path to gain shape and pocket the ball. One thing I see about Shane is his demeanor is he really feels like it does, isn't going to take much for him to overcome anything in any of these matches, meaning the winter break, he likes what's going on with it. Mm -hmm. He can run some racks. Watch out, seven ball. It's got to get going a little bit. I don't know if that got there. I th yeah, it's a little light. That's why I was saying I thought he might level out and roll that in and go at the five with the cue ball. Playing for the other corner on the three. I think personally, I, w I would be in favour of your choice also. But when you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> and you never know, maybe he needed that right English on the ball to make the one. Maybe to get around the nine. Mm -hmm. Maybe there was a little more snooker than we thought. That's the shot of the match so far. Last year, like every year, he came here. He's one of the favourites for the title. He beat Jason Shaw comfortably. That raised hopes. But he ended up going out in the last 16 to Oliver Shulnoki of Hungary. Comfortably beaten, in fact, 11-5. Whole different story in 22. I think them last two shots, the three and four ball, there's uh, is certainly going to give him a boost here. Yeah, the three was a great jump shot, but I think the four was even a little awkward itself. A Indeed. light stun to the yeah. corner, right? So. Got a little on the wrong side here, so he's going to have to go forward a little bit. 
I think anyways, he may draw short side, but I don't think so. similar to the two ball in the second game here. So it looks as though Ocean Streak is going to end at three racks in a row. Nip and tuck, cat and mouse, call it what you will, there's only one in it, Ocean leads, 3-2. and stuff like that so that's right right I mean, you're never going the, the, the run out's right. always going to be the biggest part of the game you know? so we're never going to get rid of that but good to see the other parts always oh, went to the right look at this wow yeah. now jeremy what are you thinking the maybe a little behind that superstition is. maybe <laughs> <laughs> now you know maybe. This is something that is a part of the game because it is, you know, a, a human involved, right? But it could have a little something to do with the referee. He, you know, he's he's confident in the referee, right? Maybe he feels like it's going to break well from both sides. So he goes back to his preferred side. That's right. Yeah, he definitely likes the right more than the left as far as overall breaking. And the referee is Marcel Eckhart from Berlin. I was chatting to him earlier. We were debating whether he's the first person ever to have refereed the World Championship final in both snooker and pool. And we reckon he's the first man because we think Michaela Tab was actually the first person to do it. I was wondering if he was going to go offensive here. And that's that mentality of keeping his opponent in the chair. I mean, just that right there is what makes him one of the world's best. I didn't even really see that shot. I was thinking, you know, hooking Roll him behind, behind the three. The three right. yeah. Well, the thing is, I think most of if you were over there at the table, you would have seen it. But mm -hmm. are you willing to t pull the trigger on taking a chance that's like true. that? And that's what separates those those huge titles, which I don't know if anybody in the building has more than you do, actually. <laughs> but. But, you know, you could say that about, you know, probably 100 players in the tournament. How many are going to pull the trigger? Oh, those are two overcuts in the side and two matches that normally he's pretty much, you know, on point about. Especially after that great um, carom he played. So Ocean finds himself back at the table a bit quicker than he might have expected. Extension, please. I think he's got to take a little chance with the cue ball here. I don't really see a great route to get on the two without maybe bumping the two. Certainly doesn't want to go into the seven with the cue ball. 
He'd love to just go straight up and down between the seven nine, but that's easier said than done. Oh, he hit it perfect. Wow, it's a great shot. There's big pressure involved in a world final for both players, Jeremy. Of course there is, but do you feel the fact that Ocean has already won this a couple of times means it's less on him? Shane Van Boning has been in the final twice before and lost both of them. He needs it more. Yeah, I mean, Shane, Shane's a guy that does put pressure on himself, and, you know, that's why so many great things has happened in his career. And, um, you know, probably say you'd have to bet that he's feeling a little more pressure on the situation than Alvin is, but, but you know, can't all be the same, right? And Ocean has the chance to send him a little message here. Just reinforcing the point. If you make a mistake, this is what I'm going to do to you. And I wonder about the break still, the change on, on which side there for Shane. And one thing you'll notice if he goes back to the other side, he doesn't hit him as hard. He, he's not willing to go unload from the other side. He's not quite as comfortable. So that may have something to do with it as well. So for the second time in the match, Ocean is going to be too clear. But the finish line is a long way off yet. It's been tense, it's been eventful. It's been intriguing so in far South in this Park. World Championship Up final. And it's Alban Ocean who leads 4-2. Uh-oh. Foul strong. As soon as he hit that. You've seen his body language. He knew it. He knew. Yeah. He knew he Let's crossed it over. It's almost the ultimate sin, really. Breaking the balls, crossing the one over. And I'll tell you, I was watching both guys on the break, and they're desperately trying to stay focused, it looks like to me. And not that it's like a struggle, but they're almost like trying to make sure they stay focused. Both of them kind of had their heads down, trying to stay in the moment not really wanting much interaction. And it is easy to get distracted by the significance of the occasion. A bit of razzmatazz with the fireworks at the start. But this layout is a treat for SVB. Yeah, he had a little shake of the head there after the two ball because he knows he got a little, you know, kind of silly out of line on the, not out of line on the three, but, you know, to where he got had to roll the ball, so... And another thing that you don't see very often is Shane had a little, was having a little talk with himself uh, while the break was going on. Yeah, that was surprised me also, especially this early on in the match. Yeah. Different at the latter stages, but this early on. Seems to have done him okay, though. <laughs> yeah, and, and why wait, right? Right. There isn't, there's no more matches after this one. Bit of a gift for Van Boning from the scratch. And he has gratefully accepted. So for the second time, having fallen two behind, he immediately pulls it back to one. The Ocean leads 4-3.
on us, beating Lee Hee Wen in the final. 13-12 in Doha. Well, I don't know if he's watching, but hats off to him this week. He played great. And I think if he gets past that filler match, we could see a, could have seen him here in this final. I he, did I did say that. I said the winner of that match, I kind of thought, would be in the final. Um, Darren is definitely um, getting back to his A game, and I think we're going to see a lot more of him back again on this main stage. Yeah, and he was mounting a charge here this week, and I think... You know what Matchroom has done for the sport, right? Has made it a little easier for some that had taken a little time off, maybe not in form, to get back in form, right? I mean, it's got to be pretty motivating all the pool you can play in the next few years. Only been three world finals that have gone hill hill, which for those of you not familiar with the game and its terminology means it goes to the very last rack. Johnny Archer in 1992 beating Bobby Hunter. And Wu Cha Ching famously back in 2005. Only a kid. He beat Ko Po Cheng 17 16. Yeah, that was some atmosphere. Extension, please. It was hard for me not to watch Wu play every match that week after just barely getting to hear about him. That was the year I uh, started playing pool. Yeah. <laughs> And the reason why I kind of thought something like that is I was at your Hall of Fame uh, dinner and I, I remember a lot of what you said about your career and making that change. Going to Jersey, I think it was to begin with. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Keep up with all you champions and Hall of Famers. <laughs> yeah, Wu was only 16 when he won the championship. Watch out. Oh. I think he's okay. And uh, the thing about Wu that year is, is that he really had the cue ball of, of, of a youngster. And, and a, of course, not terrible cue ball, but, you know, a little haphazard at times, but did not miss rack after rack, shot after shot. Back in the present day, it's a long time since Shane Van Boning was 16. But he's probably been dreaming about winning this world championship since around that time. And he has a chance here to draw level in the final. Jeremy, just then I automatically assumed he would have drew over. I know the worry of the side pocket, but drew over for the six into the bottom corner. Mm -hmm. I was quite surprised when he just stunned it across for the top corner. Well, I didn't mind the top corner, but if he did that way, I thought he would follow his ball yeah. up behind it instead yeah. of stunning over. But, you know, Shane's a little unique at times. Of course, we all talk about that. But one thing I see is he's, he's not even close to settled in, but he's fighting through it. Like, just hasn't been, you know, right on point just yet. Shank on bowling. Nicely nice done. So, from two behind, he's drawn level. For all. Yeah, not surprised Alex Kazakis is having a beer after the disappointment of earlier today losing in the world semifinals for the second time. Uh, he deserves it, though. He's, he played a great week of pool, Alex. Ah, oh, that's the break. Now, the one did catch the point. What's the six going to do? Oh, mm. 
we can see what's happening here. <laughs> and the thing about Shane, as far as you so, showed his scores throughout, but in his interview here earlier, you know, he said, I'm here to win. So he's going to have that pressure on himself right from the beginning of the tournament, right? He's not going to say, oh, I'm, I'm winning easy. He wants to get in a certain type of mode that he knows what it takes to win this event. Got to shoot at this, huh, Kelly? Oh, yeah, and I'm, I'm betting the odds that he's going to make it also. To lead for the first time since 1-0. but you've got to get to 13 to be champion. Well, I think Albin Ocean is just sitting in his chair, hoping for an opportunity to come as quickly as break possible. Chef for to break, leading 5-4. That scratch could be costly. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that was the turning point. He was 4-2 in front at that time. One-way traffic since. Well, that rack didn't sound very good. I'll tell you that. A lot of movement coming towards the bottom rail with about three or four balls. So that right side produced another dry break at a not so opportune time for SVB. Watch all the balls just go to the back rail there with the nine. That usually says that maybe something a hair off with the rack, Kelly. Yeah, all the balls can't have been frozen, unfortunately. And, you know, when it's a... Wooden rack and the referee has to be responsible for that. It's a lot of pressure, but nobody can be perfect. No, it happens. Yeah, that's right. That's the human part of it. You know, I talked about earlier that, you know, it's just going to be like that sometimes. The thing is, it's so crucial for the player. Now, is he not taking on this cut? He has to be, right? Okay, yeah. I was wondering, but I guess he was very much worried about uh, about getting snookered. Why wouldn't you go into that s a little more speed? Firmer. Yeah, yes. the middle of the table is completely open, right? So maybe did he have a little thought of making the nine right there? I really was surprised that he never went into it firmer. Just let his stroke out, let the balls move. The nine's going towards Extension, the three. Please. It can be left over the pocket. Yeah. That conclusion to the previous rack. Not the first time we've seen Van Boning make a 1-9 combination at a big moment. I was just talking a little earlier about his two occasions where he's delivered the winning point in the Moscone Cup. One of those in 2018 was also a 1-9 to finish it off against Alex Kazakis. This is going to be some shot. Oh, wow. Now this may get on the rail and get a little funny. Still a pretty incredible play, and he's got a little bit of the cue ball, so he needs to be able to hit downward. Probably got a bit more out of that than expected, huh, Kelly? Yeah, I think so, actually, but what a beautiful stroke. I mean, wow. But you're right, I think he didn't, ex didn't play for it quite as much as what he got out of that one. And he may end up on top of this ball a little bit. No, it's going to get past it. So now in a great position. Right. Think... So what we're we doing here, Jeremy? Are we uh, going for the carom on uh, the nine? No, I think no? the five goes by the it, it goes by the nine. I mean, off the nine easily. So I think it's just pocket the four. Have a little angle on the five to come across. If the nine ends up sitting in the pocket still after the five, you shoot a combo. But 
I don't think an early win just yet. Ocean has also experienced delivering the winning point in the Moscone Cup. In fact, he did it on his debut in Las Vegas in 2015, beating Skylar Woodward to close it out for Europe. Yeah, you know, as long as you don't hit this too light or too hard, medium, it has to go, the five ball, I think. It'll double kiss and go. It'll go just with a light kiss and go. So, yeah, I think any harder it could have rattled yes. or any softer it could have double kissed and stood up. But but I think medium speed, it was pretty impossible uh, to miss the five. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think from when I first glanced that it actually went and um, that's why I suggested the other option, but this shot is a little tricky. I don't see it being any problems. Once this is out of the way, then it uh, should be taking it to 5-5. Five five. Oh, a little Ooh. shaky. And that's a champion's gut instinct right there from Kelly Fisher, recognizing that that type of shot can go a little a little wrong sometimes, right? It's just the elevation, you yeah. know, you're trying to control the cue ball to get onto the next ball and the elevation, if you put any spin on whatsoever that you didn't intend to, you can just push it, squirt it really across the, the path. Yeah, and these, these two players, we forget that they are human, so they are feeling some nerves. Good response this to going behind from Alban Ocean, doing what he does, feeding off the opportunity he was given. They were level at one all. They were level again at four all. And now know. it's five Thanks each. Being Shane Wolford, you know, the playing the big, big events, well squared, for he's paying attention. He does the right thing. He practices a lot. He's got a great head on his shoulders. And you can say all of those things about Alban Ocean. He's drawn level at five all. Jesus. All right, the one's coming down again. Oh, is he going to get a friendly kiss or not? Not bad. Seeing those little signs of frustration again, fighting his own minor demons, you might say. He's spoken about how he knows he plays better when he has a more tranquil mind. Those little shows of frustration, something he tries to eradicate. But it's part of his makeup. I think yeah. he's just a little bit frustrated with his cue ball control off the last two breaks. The one we saw previous was where he scratched, and that one he wanted to really park it, come off the side rail and park it in the middle of the table. And we saw there was some top spin generating on that again, which he did not want. He's got to run into a ball here, it looks like. That's one thing about Alvin, he does seek for perfection. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've, you know, I've played him and I've watched him, and you think he great shot, you're perfect, and he's still shaking his head. You know, it, it wasn't perfect for him. 
Well, people always ask me about that because I was, you know, kind of the same way. But it wasn't so much to me where the cue ball ended up. Um, as to me, you know, something in the delivery I didn't like. You know, like people would say the exact same thing. Are you upset with that position or something? And I'm like, no, I just, I just don't want to feel that delivery like that again. You know, it maybe didn't cost me this shot, but if it was a little harder shot, it probably would have cost me that delivery I just had. So. People mistake it sometimes for, oh, they want to be perfect, but it's really about the execution, I think, more than anything. Ocean is hoping for the same outcome to the World Championship as we had last year, i.e. him holding the trophy. One thing that would be different would be he'd have taken the title undefeated. Last year, he did lose to Roberto Gomez. Had to come back in through the loser side and then really took off from there. Michael, let me ask you, as both Shane and Albin both gone undefeated so far mm. in this championship. Yeah. Yeah. That says something, doesn't it? That's fantastic. Yeah, once Ocean got back in, he chalked up an impressive series of victories. Beat Torsten Homan, two time champion. So off Mieszko Fertunski as well. Comfortable win over Skylar Woodward in the quarters, and even more so against David Alcady in the semis. His really big test towards the finish was the final against Omar Al Shaheen. 9 7 down, won six racks in a row for the title. Yeah, I remember watching that final. It was some kind of crazy, I'll tell you. Omar is always so much fun to watch. You're almost always going to see something you haven't seen before when that guy's playing. Or you don't see very often, let's say that. He was down nine to one in a match here this week and won ten in a row. Albin Ocean is shaking his head after his break-off shot. But nothing wrong with the outcome of it. He's run out from there and he's back in front at 6-5. Um, you know, sweating it out over four days, right? Plus the pressure of, of trying to put America back, back on the map the in that Shannon event. Six, five, and so it's a little more personal side here. I th like I said, I think it's a totally different pressure, but maybe the levels are pretty alike. I think when uh, it's a team play, you know, when you're playing for your team, it is a totally different pressure. Oh, yeah. Um, and again, it can be as intense but it's definitely a different feeling. Okay, so we're going to see a safety most well. I mean, you never, yeah, we're going we're gonna to see the safety behind the 4-6 for sure. I was, I was going to say maybe a long reel bank, but once the 4-6 aligned like this, he's going to bury the cue ball. don't think he really wants to disrupt the four and six much because when they're sitting like this, if you come in and bump the six a little bit, you could make it to where the four is not playable. So I'd like to just ease into there. The one's going to come down table plenty. All right, good, call. good shot there. Good shot. Right, he's got a kind of slow roll kick at this, I think. Might put some speed on it, I guess. And Boning just plays in all sorts of events. 
the biggest like this. But in addition to that, much smaller events, particularly all around the US. That's just always seems to be called. playing in something. They won seven different tournaments in 2021. Texas Open, perhaps the biggest of those. Oh, great shot there. Oh, wow. Great shot. And now he's going to try and return the favor, I think, behind that four and six with the cue ball. And I loved his choice with the slow roll kick. It wasn't ever going to offer position, but at least you can maintain accuracy on the kick with that lighter speed. That's right. And also it gives the, the pocket, makes the pocket a bit bigger. Yeah. gives that one a better chance to drop. I just got to get a little into the cue ball here. Oh, nice shot. Wants the two to pass the nine. That way the jump isn't available. And the eight's a kind of big ball, too. I think he can go around it, though. I think he'd like to have seen that cue ball closer to them two balls. Yeah. Now he's got this uh, left side bottom rail as a chance to, to hit the two. And always when it's close to the, the two built ball being close to the bottom rail, you've always got a chance to make it. Yeah, and separation is almost not guaranteed, but you almost have to hit it only one or two kind of ways not to separate the two ball and the cue ball. Yeah. So, like a medium speed here, right, Kelly? Yeah, most definitely a touch of running left English. Yeah, if he hits it full, they separate. If he catches anywhere, quarter of the ball, half the ball, they should separate as well. Full. That's the full side of him. He's got a lot of left on that. And he's left Shane a very difficult shot, even though it is playable. Position is difficult as well, though. So Shane's going to have to earn this one. Got to roll this in and then make another nice shot on the three ball. Ah, sweet. And you can learn something from there. I used to hit that shot under hit it, right? You're not going to get great on the three anyways. So why not put that extra six or eight inches of distance on the cue ball? That way you get a little better contact on the two. Yeah, and you can let your stroke out a little bit more. Right. And I still don't think he's totally settled knowing Shane, meaning just the delivery and everything, but he's battling, I'll tell you that. He's coming out with some fantastic shots. Them last two, people may not realize how difficult they are, let alone in the final of the World Championship. Well, if he does win this rack, it'll probably be the hardest one to win so far for him. Cue ball's covered a lot of ground. It's been tough going. He's had to work hard for this. Oh, yeah, and that just shows you how great these guys are. Alvin did nothing wrong. Just Shane kind of taking it away, this rack trying to tie the match at six and I'm very interested to see if he gets out here what he does with the break as far as where he breaks from. I generally kill this one on the slidey table myself. Shane sometimes will still kind of stun across. And that's the shot I like. We were talking before the match about the possibility of it going hill hill, getting to 12 all. We're halfway there, you know. Shane Van Boning levels again. It's now six all.
I think it's pretty obvious there's a guy that I'd like to see win it. Um, but I'd sure just like to keep it where it's at right now. Yeah. <laughs> and You know, there's one, one feeling that you want to see somebody win their first ever world title. You know, that's something that we've all got that heart uh, in us. But for also, we'll it's difficult because we've got Albin that we want to love over. to see retain his title. You well, know. yeah. And, you know, Shane's been the last 15, 20 years of pool, and, and we can still say that Albin's got another 15 or 20 left, right? So, yeah, and look what he did. He went right back to the other side. Uh, this purple five ball's going to be a little ugly, I think. But going back to what you said, Jeremy, wouldn't it be funny, given all the years that he was the best player in the world? Look to be a world champion in waiting. If he finally did it at a time when there are so many others who have come through to challenge him and overtake him at the highest level. Well, I think that would make it very easy for him to d dismiss, you know, missing out on those others the last 15 years, maybe even easier. Where do you roll out here? Trying to the two balls too much in play to roll out to the jump on the on the one because Alvin will take it and try to bury it. I think he's just rolling it across to the opposite side. There he is. Yeah, that's fine. I think. Yeah. Alvin, it's your choice. I think Alvin will take this and play the safe. Putting the one ball up toward the top rail near the two. Yeah. Cue ball over to the opposite side to hopefully leave. You think tries to come two rails behind the nine? That that may let the one go a little bit, and there's a lot of openings. You know, you don't have that two ball eclipse somewhere that you can, you know, you can use as far as having a lot of room for error, right? Well, I think you're right, Jeremy, either that or I'm putting the cue ball on the left cushion and the one ball across on the left side. But it's a bit dangerous. I like that, actually. I think with the four and seven there, that's probably the shot, just like this. Now, I don't know if he's he's done it or not, but I like going where I got two balls to maybe get behind, right? A soft kick here and just try and, you know, live to fight another day here in a moment. Just lay on the one. You know you're probably going to get snookered, but it may improve from there. What would you? What do you fancy? Just a, that's what I like. I, said, I just got the last one right. I'm, I'm keeping <laughs> my mouth shut on this one. Well, just the, the soft <laughs> kick to the inner rail with a little spin, maybe. Trying to lay on the one ball. Extension yeah, piece. and just rolling the one ball toward the seven slightly. Yeah. You can play a one pocket shot with top left, trying to go to the top rail and come in and hit it full and bank it away, you know, hoping for a little fortune. Is that possible with a slidey cloth? Yeah, I think so, because yeah. the one will travel a long ways, you know, and that's what I think he was trying to be honest right. with. Now he may have gotten away with a little something here if this one doesn't cut in the side. The two big field long match events that we always bracket together are this World Championship and the US Open. The last of those was in Atlantic City late last year. And these two met each other in the final round on the loser's side. Ocean had been beaten early by That's Victor Zielinski, so he needed to win five matches to get through to the final stage. Won four of them, beat Kazakis and Chang Young Lin along the way. But then Van Boning beat him. 11-2. Well, if you watched that U.S. Open last year, Shane was in great form. It took uh, one heck of a match for him to get beat and knocked out of the event. So thought he was in, in, in the right place to win his sixth title last year, to be honest with you. Okay. This isn't going to be his best. And I'm a pretty hard critic on the guy because he usually lays it down perfectly, right? He does. He does. Yeah, that's a surprising safety error from Albin. You cut this in and go into the three, or do you elevate the cue here? I'd be elevating. Yeah. 
you got to really be feeling good just to go into the three. It's not a terrible shot, though. The four got into problems here. Now he's got an edge. The four balls helped him. If that wasn't there, I think it might have scratched. scratched yeah. yeah. He's <laughs> definitely cutting at this. Can't afford to slow roll it. Still can't hold for the three, so he's got to let it go a little bit. So watch out, nine ball. Oh, hit it perfect. Starting to get a little bit of a strut, right? Mm -hmm. And this ball just got funny. He's got to pinch it a little bit to make sure he doesn't get behind the five. Starting to feel okay, Kelly. Yeah, you can just see in his demeanor, can't you? In his stroke. Yeah. I didn't want to be there, <laughs> but I, I'd take it, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's just a bit of talking to almost every shot for himself. You know what I mean? It's, it hasn't got to be necessarily a bad thing or a negative thing. It's just a bit of talking to, you know. It's a scene in golf here in the UK. When you win a match play contest, seven and six, that's called the dog license, because in old money, that's what it cost. Shane Van Boning is straining at the leash to become a world champion. And as he closes in on leading by 7-2-6. He's pulled Welcome back 14, to the final the break. of the Leading World seven. Pool Championships. A thing of beauty, the SVB break. Just a beautiful sight in the game. So consistent, isn't he, JJ? Yeah, and I was saying it earlier from that side, you may not see him unload quite as much just because he likes the right side better. But I'll tell you, he's feeling pretty good because he didn't back off at all there. He's got to figure out a path for the to get position on the four. He's got to cut in the side again, which is he's missed a couple of these and not, one in this match and one in the last. This one's not as difficult as the others. He's got to pull the cue ball a little bit and probably gets a little thin on the four as well. He wants to get a lot out of this cue ball. Oh, he did. Five ball goes in the side. I think so. I'm getting as much out of the cue ball as he did right there on that first shot really opens up the rack to be fairly routine. One thing Shane Van Boning has yet to do in this final is lead by more than a single rack. 
And as we start to move towards the business end of the match, this would be a wonderful time to do it. And I think he's, you know, settling in, but still dealing with some nerves. But he's working through it. Yeah, I've watched the first session, if you like, live up close, and I was looking at Shane, and you can see he wants this bad. You can see it in his face, and I think now is a good time for Shane just to kind of relax and play how he can. I mean, obviously, he's played great so far. Yeah, he's uh, he's feeling it, you know. Just the sort of rack he was looking for. He led 1-0. He led 5-4. A few minutes ago, he went ahead again at 7-6. But now, for the first time, he's opened a two-rack gap. Shane Van Boning, dreaming of glory. Thank you, 15, Frank. Shane Boning to break. Leading the match 8 6. But how much greater would the heartbreak be for this man after everything he's experienced in his long, long quest to fulfill his world championship destiny? He needs five more racks. Yeah, again, just look at the cue ball control. And he's going to get thin on the one, but it's not going to keep him from shooting. He's got a path to come up and down the table. And I don't think we're going to see him change break spots anymore during this match. The seven has gotten a little tricky on top of the nine. That's a little further down the road in this rack. Certainly got a thin one ball he's got to address, but very natural position up and down the table. We've been talking about Van Boning's great breaking in this championship, and you saw it there. He's had four breaking runs already. Ocean just two in this final. Oh, he's going to come underneath the two ball here, maybe. Uh, he's going to need a little bit of a roll. I don't know if he got it. Does he play the bank shot, JJ? Hey, I think it's sitting a little funny for that. I think he maybe tucks him underneath the three ball. Is that is that doable to chip the two and run a couple rails to the back side of the three? Does that look all right? Yeah, he can certainly get a good two ball, can't he? Yeah, two below the nine and seven. It looks pretty natural to me, to be honest with you. He could even roll the two over towards the six. Extension, yeah. Extension please. Is he playing a cut into the side? I think he is. Okay. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. 
Yeah, he's just rolled it over towards the six, and that's that's good. Actually, that's real good. Now, one thing that we're facing is, at least for this event, uncharted waters for Ocean, right? Down eight to six here late in the match. Well, he did have Somewhat. a couple of close yeah. ones early on, but like Van Boning, he's finished strongly throughout the championship. Yeah, I was going to say a soft kick. If this goes to that side rail, could be problems. Oh, pretty sweet. I think yeah. this got playable, though. I really do. He's just got to cut the two and, and put some speed on it. Don't baby it. The one thing I would say when he had those tight finishes earlier, none of them were against Shane Van Boning. He's going to play the safety here, but he may deaden up this 2 6 for the kick. No, he's done all right there. Same shot for Albin. Yeah, another soft kick. And all you're doing if you're Albin is you're trying to just improve your situation. You're hoping that Shane maybe messes up another safety here in a moment. Now this one here looks sits a little different. He can go at this with a little more speed trying to come off the two and hoping that the six ball contains the two ball and maybe the, the cue ball gets behind the seven nine. See how he did this now. Now it got away from him but he had a chance to fluke the six also. So I think the percentage was correct there. Which is probably the case if Alvin's shooting. <laughs> yeah I'm not going to disagree with you or Alvin. That's, that's a dead cert. Well, I don't know. You're a pretty crafty player, Carl. <laughs> Maybe crafty. I don't know about crafty player. <laughs> well, the big the big news is SVB's at the table with another good chance. Six balls moved a little closer to this corner, which may solve the problem with the seven if it doesn't pass the nine. Might be easier to get on that seven in the side. He's not addressed it yet, though, so I'm guessing he has a pretty good plan for a playable seven ball. Like maybe it just goes in the lower left, no problem. Yeah, there you have it. Well, that's a Brucey bonus for Shane. Did you say Brucey? Brucey. I was going to say, yeah, that's one for the British audience. That's a an old TV I still term. Still like learning it though. Yeah, so. <laughs> goes back to an old game show. Carl showing his age there. Bruce Forsyth, the legendary presenter of that. Well, he's gotten a little on the wrong side now. He's got to kind of. I don't like going forward on the slick table on this shot right here. I like just cheating the pocket, <coughs> kind of pinch drawing it. All right. You got to kind of slowly come up the table or else it could get away from you. Well, I said a few minutes ago it was the first time Shane Van Boning had been too clear. Alvin Ocean did lead by two early on in the match. But neither player has been three in front. Until now, Shane Van Boning tightens his grip on this world final still further. Now just four more racks needed.
lot of players. Break 16. They're so sweating the final. Leading the match 9-6 and good break. The two's coming down. It's going to get below the nine. Is it going to get playable, though? I don't know. This has gotten to where I don't know if he can cut it to either pocket. If he thinks it is cuttable, though, he's shooting. Looks awfully thin to me, Carl. What do you think? I think it does go. I think it. He's obviously very thin, but the other big thing is, can he avoid the nine ball with loads of spin? Well, I hate to be spinning this in. Yeah, and then I want to just flat cut this, right? Yeah, and try and miss the nine on the right hand side. Yeah, and then you got to miss the eight and the side pocket a little bit. So I still think this looks pretty dicey to me. I'll tell you. Can he get the cue ball in? Behind the five. The five yeah. Uh, yeah, with this coming across it thickly with some spin. It's like a one pocket shot. Extension, please. It, he can definitely play that. He's been this close and closer still to the world title in the past. I mentioned his 13 6 defeat against Ocean in 2016. His other world final the year before was a good deal closer 13 11. He was beaten by Copin Yee. Now it's got to go, but he's got an edge of the red three. Nothing easy. You can't see it, though. He hit that with spin as well. Just kind of helps the two throw over a little bit. Oh, absolutely. But still, when you're close to it, it's a harder shot, believe it or not. Oh, he hit that sweet. Like, really sweet. Up and down, not contacting the seven or the nine. And he's, you know, Shane's always had his things he does, but even more of a routine I see, you know, with the chalk in the cube, making sure he's taking that little extra time, kind of massaging the clock a little bit. It's important, though, not to get too much out of your natural rhythm that got you here in the first place, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, I think it was again, he, I think he's 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 dealing with a different SVB than he used to a little bit more nerves. Yeah, he just wants to get this first world title, doesn't it? And then it's it's all put to bed. Well, you might. I think it may go. Uh oh, this got away from him a little bit. So a little little smirk there. But I think actually it, it might go the other way. It might be more of an alarm clock. It might be a sixth the U.S. Open. <laughs> I, you know what's wrong with winning them both in one year? Well, not that many players have won them both in their career. That's right. He's feeling every shot. He's living every shot. So much body language. Every yeah. one of these balls is just another little step. And what he hopes is the final stage of his long journey towards becoming a world champion. The breathing getting a little heavier with every stroke he takes. Just a little light stun down the center. Oh, he went inside. That may be a little heavy. Maybe a little heavy. He's all right. Well, that was a tight way to come in, right? He's absolutely fine. And it's five in a row for Shane Van Boning. He's starting to disappear out of Alban Ocean's view. It's now 10-6.
so much for the I fans to look forward to. If I'm bowling the break. And of course, you can get tickets for all of those minutes. events if you'd like to come along and watch. Shane Van Boning closing in on his dream. He's on a real roll here. Five racks in a row. He needs another three. He's lost the cue ball downward a little bit here. He's going to need a little help as far as a look at the one. And I think he does have a look at the one. Pretty sure he does. It's not going to be easy position, though. It's a slick table trying to come down the table accurately for the two. And, and maybe he can't, he can't make the one, just has enough to maybe play a safety off the one. You can see the difference, though, if you park in the cue ball in the center of the table. How much more options you've got when that cue ball is in the middle. Yeah, even if, you know, if that's why you saw him shaking his head. He's a little upset at himself losing the cue ball. Looks like to me he's going for it here, though. Yeah, he can pop this ball. He caught a little thick, so is the cue ball going to make it? Actually, this may work out. I think he was trying to get to the short side of the two. Yeah, I'm with you, JJ. I think he was. And yeah, watch how thick the one hit the pocket. That'll cost you at least probably two feet of cue ball movement. Now, this is touchy, isn't it? With the crutch, with the bridge. The crutch? Yeah, this is... Uh, like some players might go into the three here rather than trying to float. Extension, right? extension, please. So, or would you maybe go into the nine trying to hold the cube? Line? Yeah, that's the shot I saw. Thanks. Oh, that takes some uh, takes some nerve to hit that soft with a lot of outside spin, huh? Yeah, Shane's not bad with the bridge, is he? Well, I can see it was really nice there. We've talked about his quest endlessly to win the world title. U.S. Open, as we've said, has been his happiest playground. Five times he's won it. First of those was in 2007 at the age of 24. As we watch the three wriggle in there. And he was a relative newcomer at the highest level at that time. But it was a real breakout year for him. He won seven titles. He was the leading money winner in the world in pool that year. Well, it looks like just one rail between the nine and seven back down for that natural little angle on the five. And I still think, yeah, you see him talking to himself. I still think he's fading some nerves a little bit. Yeah, he's really going through it all, making sure he doesn't do anything silly, make sure he's thinking clearly. I actually kind of like that, what he's doing. I do too. I, I think it gives him a new perspective on something to, to work on, right? Uh, I know that sounds silly, maybe not something everyone will want to do, but this guy... It's almost like Tiger Woods changing his swing a little bit, trying to improve it. Well, Tiger Woods won his first major in the first major he played as a professional. His story could not have been more different to that of Shane Van Boning and his long, long wait. Try to think of parallels. Goran Ivanisevic, all those years, looked like he was... Never going to win the Grand Slam title, his talent merited, until he finally won Wimbledon in 2001. But he was never the best player in the world. Shane Van Boning was for many years. So many times he's turned up at the World Championship as one of the leading contenders, or the front runner, and it's never happened for him. But after all this time, It might be only minutes away.
it was looking like being a very close finish in this World Championship final, and it may yet be, but Shane Van Boning is doing his best to avert that. He was 6-5 down against Alban Ocean, two-time and reigning champion. But with six racks in a row, he has really taken control here as he closes in on that long-awaited first world title. He's a little thin on the two ball, but he's got to love it. He's got to find a pocket for the three, of course. Which I think he can come over and take a long distance shot on the three. I believe so, anyways. Did this two get kind of funny here, Carl? Well, it did, but I do believe he can thin snip this in. Three ball looks like it only goes in the bottom left. Doesn't look like he can get down table, does it, for a choice of middle. No, he's just going to have to play for the angle on the three to, to work the cue ball off the three to the four. So I don't think you can get ideal on the three at all. Now, just got to make sure he doesn't contact the eight coming by, coming across. Very good. And he wants more angle because he couldn't get perfect, right? This got a little flattish, but it should be okay. Now he's had a couple of these shots the last few days where he had to unload and he overcut them a couple times, right? I think this is fine, though. We've talked about his nerves, Jeremy. But how nervous are you feeling for your mate as he closes in on his lifelong dream? Yeah, I'm pretty clammy right now, Michael. That's for sure. Sweat, sweat glands are going. <laughs> This is a little thin as well, isn't it? Yeah, and the sevens, you know, definitely a ball he's got to worry about contacting. I don't know if he can really go somewhere else besides back and forth some kind of way. Extension, please. A six nine isn't a great combo to fall on, of course. He'd rather stay away from that. But does he cut this in and just stay above the seven a couple of rails here? Maybe three rails even. Sweet kiss. Shot, that was a great shot, but even a better little kiss on the seven. Well, there's not much Albin Ocean can do. It's the final. It was seven six, and he's had a couple of kick shots. All right, short side position, it looks like. Wants this to fall a little underneath the seven near the rail. Well, that's perfect. Let's just cast your mind back. Mika Imminen was 10-3 up. Yeah. He missed a long five ball for the match. Shane did the unthinkable, come back and won that match. And now he's just two balls away from getting himself on the hill in this final. Yeah, that was pretty much around this exact time on Friday night, wasn't it? And if you tapped him on the shoulder then and said, right, 48 hours from now, you're going to be this close to becoming world champion. I'd love to know what he would have thought. There's the man who won it last year. He may yeah. not be able to do anything more to influence the outcome of this year's final. And desperately wanting a shot because, you know, this has eluded Shane for so long, which it hasn't eluded Albin, but you figure him to get back to a final, probably win another world championship or two, but but you never know.
Got to hit them square. Thank you, Dean. 19, Frank. Schaefer Boning is breaking on the hill. Leading 12-6. The biggest shot of his life. Yeah, what's going to happen on this break? Is he going to make a ball? Is he going to squat the cue ball in the centre? Does he get a shot on the lowest ball? Well, he made a ball. The one's in a nice place so far. Eight Let's, ball may spoil the things. The eight ball's really ruined a few things for SVB at the moment. Why would you get an easy layout for the title? Yeah, right. It's like when it goes hill hill for the title. You'll never see a break and run hardly. It's almost always some drama. Okay, let's push. see here. Push out cold. Where the push is. Hmm. There's a few kick possibilities he could push out to, but yeah, that's what I kind of liked myself right here. Your choice, Alvin. I mean, Alvin's got to pass this. I mean, the score alone says he's got to pass this. Now the thing is, the kick isn't that bad. It's a kick to the top rail there, and you want to come in and hit roughly half a ball on the one and go to the side rail and back up on the eight and six, but I'd be surprised with the score the way it is that he that he takes this on. He sees the kick though, right, Carl? Yeah, he'll back himself to kick this. If play again, please, Shane. he wanted to play the shot, but you're right, JJ's give it back. I think the score tells you he's got to give it back. He's got to have Shane prove it to him right here. Otherwise, maybe he gets a really good starter, right? That'd be an Albin. Now, if you want to do this successfully, you can't worry about the one so much. It's all about the cue ball. Half ball hit. Should go to the long rail back up on the eight and six. Oh, he hit it full. Well, oh, he's going to love that, even though the one's over the pocket. I thought he would roll it a little more, you know. Still hit it pretty sweet, right? Yeah, he hit it great. Now, Albin is a big favorite to make this one ball. Getting on the two is going to be a problem. Yeah, and he could keep that jump cue in his hand because unfortunately he carried the seven with the cue ball. Just that half ball hit on the seven just brought him carrying together. Uh -oh. Ball in hand. Let's go, Shane. <laughs> yeah, ball in hand. It's been 20 years since the last American and won this title. That was Earl Strickland, SVB. You've got six balls to get that title. And he's got to watch his shirt with the pink four here. He's going to get close to the four. Destiny is calling. Is it going to be the six in the side here in a moment, Carl? Depends on where he gets on the four, I guess. Yeah, the six is good. I'm kind of sat right behind it. That's where the cue ball sort of is now would be <laughs> ideal. Doesn't really want to be straight on this ball. I think he's got just enough angle where he can stun the cue ball over. Yeah, and he doesn't mind putting a little speed into the side pocket. We have to draw the cue ball off the side rail. Yeah, just straight draw. Doesn't really need much outside at all. 
maybe a half a tip, eighth of a tip, quarter tip, something like that. You don't want to get, you know, you don't want to get on top of the eight, right? Yeah, sometimes things are just not meant to be in this game. Albin has had a lot of success in this event, but from 7-6, well, he's just not he's just not had a go, has he? He just yeah. not. And I think maybe even more so, just more meant to be for SVB, right? Yeah, and I was looking at his route to this title before. He's he's not been given this title. He's beat four or five of the greatest yes! players. He's waited so long for this. Why not milk it? Enjoy it for all it's worth. Extension, please. Shane Van Bonning. At last! Third time is the charm for Shane Van Bonning. As after losing twice in the final, his destiny is fulfilled. Shane Van Bonning has beaten Alvin Ocean by 13 racks to six to depose the Austrian and become the World Pool Champion 2022. Hats off to Alvin Ocean, of course, getting to a fourth final, a record fourth final. But nothing, uh, nothing more special than seeing SBB get this crown. Thrown off those shackles, who's so, to say it won't happen it is again? Now time for the official trophy presentation of this year's World Pool Championship, and to help us present the awards, ladies and gentlemen, let's get a round of applause. For the managing director of Matchroom Multisport, Emily Fraser. <laughs> and of course, to have a word with our finalists, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. Michael Bridges. Shane, this means so much to you, doesn't it? You're finally the world champion. Uh, I mean, I can't believe it. So, I mean, this is a. Uh... Uh, special day for me, really. Greatest new career? Uh, the biggest moment in my career, I mean, for sure. I mean, I won five US Opens, and uh, this is the day, yeah. And you've worked, tell her, you've worked so hard for this, haven't you? you worked hours and hours and hours, practice, practice, practice. You only take time off to go fishing, don't you? <laughs> I mean, I can't wait to get home, but... Um, you know, I mean, I put in so many hours uh, my whole career, and, uh, you know, I, I dreamed to be the world champion. And um, today is the moment. Brilliant. I'll cut carry on in a minute, Shane. Just a word on this year's runner-up, Albin Ocean, who was last year world champion, Premier League pool winner, Moscone Cup. Albin, you've had a wonderful career. This is just the start, isn't it? Just tell us your thoughts on the final. Um, I think to the, to the middle of the match, it was like back and forth. Uh, like I saw myself six five up, played a safety and didn't make a shot anymore in the whole match. Um, it was incredible. I mean, fair play to him. He played a great match. He played a great tournament. He made great comebacks. So well deserved winner. Just, it was it just one of those finals where just the odd mistake might have just proved costly this time. Uh, seems like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. I mean, I'm I'm not. I'm disappointed, but I think it's fair to say that he just played better. He had a few roles, but uh, without that, you cannot be world champion. We know how difficult nine ball is, though. It's so rare. To, you're retaining it is so difficult, but you get to a final after winning the world championship. You've got to be proud of that. Oh, of course. Uh, I cannot be disappointed at that point. Uh, reaching the final is, uh, I mean, it's the biggest tournament of the year. Reaching the final, play against Shane, could go either way. So, of course, I'm proud of myself. So you should be. We've got so many tournaments coming up thick and fast over the next few months. Uh, Emily, if you could just give Albin the second place trophy, runner up, and $30,000 for you, Albin. Albin Ocean, everyone. Shane, 
you've been ultra consistent this week. You had a couple of tough matches. Mika, that comeback, Mika Imminent at the end. Two really tough matches. Did you feel you got better and better as the week went on? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We, um, you know, it was just a fantastic week, um, especially when I came back against Mika. I mean, that match right there was a turnaround for me. You know, I could have been out earlier, and um, I fought my way through. This game means so much to everyone back home in America as well. There'll be millions watching. How does that feel? Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know what words to say. I mean, I mean... I'm just, I'm really happy for myself, really. Um, thank you to all the fans out there that support me, and, you know, thank you for Matchroom for making this happen. Without you guys, this would never happen. And, and also, you know, you travel around the world, Shane, London, back and forth. There was a difficult Moscone Cup for the USA this time. You feel you've given something back? I got the momentum going, so um, I'll see you all in Vegas. <laughs> Shane Van Boning. It gives me great pleasure to call you the World Pool Champion. Go and lift that trophy.